We're fortunate to be awake so early. We're fortunate. Yeah, I had, I had to remind myself that last couple of days because I was really, I was really, you know, going through some like really tough meditations and uh, really just beat myself up about where I'm not at in life. But but I had I had to, and this is physical, phys- you know, in the physical world, you know. And, but I had to really think about where I am at in life and, and the people that I have touched and 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 the thing and the things at, at my core, my soul level that I that I do know, which is it's like uh, I'm I'm like you know. Uh, 2000 years old you know what i'm say in a, in a 30 sun year old body so like right. it, nobody there's not many people that are like, going to appreciate that so it's like you got you got you got to learn how to appreciate yourself in a, in a world yeah. that doesn't that doesn't value um things that you that you hold dear you know right yeah you do because how can somebody value something they don't understand yeah exactly it. yeah For questions, comments, and to show your support, visit us on the web at afroempath.com. I think it's the 4th of July, probably people are like, I don't know. Not, like, do, I wonder, do black people even celebrate that? Who knows? <laughs> you know, but They do. They do. <laughs> I, I think um, we do. At my school, they had a celebration, but instead of um, American flags, they had Pan-African flags. Word, I respect I that. like, eh. I kind of don't, but it is what it is. Well, I mean, at least I don't have the fucking American flag. It's a, it's a, it's a step in the right direction, right? That's true. And I, I guess having a cookout and, and at, at least and it's at least, yeah, exactly. It's, you know, it's at least a time to come together, but you know, I mean, you know, like, it would be like me and you were probably sitting around brooding, you know, right. <laughs> which, Yo. which, which, which kind of brings me to the, the, the topic at hand here. I want to, I want to talk about INFP value systems. Right and and yeah. how and how they impact us both positively and, and negatively. Okay. Yeah. For example, yeah. like for, Fourth Fourth of July. This is a this is a perfect 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 example. Like, um, even as a even as a child, I didn't I didn't really know history that well, but I knew we were slaves during this time. Or I I knew we probably you know we probably were slaves during this time. I was like so I was, I was always conflicted. Like, how the fuck should I feel about this day? <laughs> you know what I'm trying to say? And that goes for many holidays, but especially the Fourth of July. You know what I'm trying to say? Yeah, and um, I you know I noticed people, no, most people didn't even care to think about that. You know, what I'm they're just like whatever fireworks, nigga, shit. I'm like, yeah, I like fireworks too, but at the same time, you know, it it, it always kind of it, it made it, it was that day always made me feel um, less American, I guess. You know what I'm saying? Than any yeah. than any than any other day. What what about yourself? I definitely felt the same way. Um, I my mom actually got me a shirt and it has Uncle Sam on it, but he has a mask over his face and he has um a gun pointed at at um whoever is looking at the shirt and like a money bag in his hand. And so I wore that to the um to the, the to the celebration and I would uh, wear that. Ah shit! Shirt. Here we go. <laughs> and so I would wear that often for um for 4th of July and yeah I didn't really appreciate it as a holiday because it's like fuck this country and everything that it stands for because it it tries to stand for being this equal society equal opportunity yet it doesn't allow for equal opportunities for all people of color and stuff like that so I just thought it was a contradiction and I didn't understand why are we celebrating this country and not celebrating um our heritage but I guess People circumvent that by also doing Juneteenth and stuff like that. But uh, funny enough, after I wore that shirt, to, after I wore that shirt, a, a pe- people gave me compliments about it, like, "Oh, I like that shirt. I like that shirt." And I'm just like, I don't really care about how America operates anymore in the sense of that I need to be so against it publicly. And so I'm just like, I can let go of this shirt now. And I threw it away right after. And I also thought that, like, maybe I was being an in- uh, an attention seeker um, by wearing that shirt, which I guess is also part of INFP um, value systems that I'm kind of going I, through. Yeah, I, I wonder. You know, I'm, I wonder if, if I don't, I mean, personally, I, this is me personally, but I think, I think it might go for you too, but I'll let you, I'll let you touch on it because, you know, it's your, it's your life and your expression. But I think that we just, like, we just don't want to be sucked into this fucking kumbaya energy that we we get lost in. You know what I'm trying to say? Where we're, where we where we lose ourselves in a celebration where we we forget like you know it, you know it's a, it, it for example the national anthem you know a couple of years ago that that was a big topic of debate. You know what I'm trying to say 
again, right. this kind this kind of uh, group patriotism that uh, Chantel. Hey guys. Oh Sorry. my god. Don't hey. I mean, go ahead. I'm listening. Okay. Well, we're we're ta- we're talking about INFP value systems, and you're you're an ENFP, so you, we we share the same the same value systems. We're just talking about like Fourth of July and being black on Fourth of July, and how like. We always kind of felt, I know I felt conflicted on it, and, and uh, Marcus was saying he felt the same way in terms of, um, you know, it, it, it didn't seem like a day, it didn't seem like a day where you could really celebrate, even like even as, even as a young child, I knew it was like, we were slaves during this time. So, you know, and so like Marcus was saying that he had a um, a shirt with Uncle Sam on it with a gun, with a gun pointed at people uh, and, and a money bag in his hand. And he was wearing that, you know, he would wear that every 4th of July and he wore that this 4th of July to his, his, his college campus. And some people, you know, were liking it and things like that. But after that, he was kind of like, he threw the shirt out. Because I, I, I mean, you tell me from wrong, Marcus, but you kind of, maybe you felt the shirt had kind of served its purpose in terms of the, the inner alchemy that you were trying to do in terms of not letting, not letting uh, your value system, uh, your INFP value system be, um, you know, taken over by the, you know, by this, these sweeping uh, celebratory, you know, uh, you know, uh, days that, 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 that we as Americans have, you know? Exactly. And, um, yeah, just <laughs> exactly as you said, I thought that it, um, it served its purpose and, um, yeah, I don't need to necessarily make, uh, statements with my clothing. I can just be, I don't know. I can just, I can just observe, ob- observe without necessarily saying much um via visuals you know yeah I, I, yeah I, th- I think for me what it is is i'm at a point in my life where i know that i'm going to be part of the change to correct a lot of the shit that's going on in this country right. so right. it's not you know at some point it's like you have you have to you're, do- you're doing the inner alchemy to make sure you don't uh spiritually uh become sidetracked and spiritually fall into this uh worldliness and this these you know these these um celebratory acts that lack value you can say but what exactly. but once you but once you know that that's who you are at your core and that's not going to change you am trying to say and you don't have you don't have to define yourself by what you post on facebook or what you wear or you're trying to say um because you because you know that you're going to be doing the work to to make to make the change then it's just like okay well it's not like you necessarily assimilate but you understand that the the real the real work has has been done internally and now it's time to express that externally and um, I would say that I, I, you don't even want to attract people that are angry. You know what I'm trying to say? Because yeah. like, if, if I, if I were to go, if I were to be wearing like, um, you know, uh, you know, I've, I've met all types of brothers in this, in conscious circles. Some, some brothers were, were black Panthers and things like that, you know, and they all, they always feel like they got to wear all this stuff to like all the kind of regalia I'm going to say to show who they are and their battle stripes and, the, and their realness. And I, and, and to some, some, some degree, I appreciate that. But at the same time, like, you know, in order to in order to get certain systems in place to f- facilitate you know structural change in this in this world that that's not that's not going to it's just like it's just going to be unneeded attention i feel Chantal, what do you feel about that do you feel you kind of get the points i'm saying here yeah i do and that's why i i mean i live the way that i live i don't celebrate holidays the things that i do celebrate are um, we I don't we, they're not holidays or traditions that myself and my children have decided have been important to us. So you know I've I'm constantly in a space or moving in a way um, where um, I'm always being asked. Well, especially with doing the mm-hmm. radio show every Monday expect on a Monday after a holiday, and it's like, hey, what did you do for the weekend? And I'm like, oh, I just chilled with the family, blah blah blah. And they're like, well, you didn't do anything, for, you know, that kind of thing. And it's just like, no, I don't, I don't celebrate holidays because they're not holidays. You know, uh, my t- last night we didn't do anything. We stayed home. We just moved into a condo and we're unpacking. And my 10 year old was asking me, you know, why don't we celebrate it? And I, and I just broke it down to him, you know, and he was like, oh, yeah, I'm glad we don't celebrate. What do you say to him? <laughs> what do you, out of curiosity, what do you say to him? He's 10 you years know, old, right? So Yeah, he's 10. And I said, well, you know, 4th of July represents the um, colonized America's um, liberation from Britain. He was like, oh, but it didn't, he automatically was like, but it didn't include everybody. And I was like, you're absolutely right. It didn't include the enslaved 
the enslaved Africans and or the natives who were already here that they'd already um, they stole the land from and they murdered and all these and and it didn't celebrate the um, the natives that had been sent to the acclimation schools either. It only celebrated the Caucasian people who had come over here illegally, technically, mm. from their 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 not their um birth state, and so he was like, "Oh yeah, mm, I don't." And then he was like, "I don't know why everybody sell. It's not a celebration." Then I was like, "But that is why I teach you the way that I teach you." And it's important that you are learning more information than what they're teaching at school because the system is designed so that people will just blindly go along with things. But we don't live like that here. And so he was fine because we don't, you know, I don't. I don't walk around, you know, when people say Merry Christmas, sometimes I might still say Merry Christmas. I don't walk around anti whatever, but we just don't participate. But the same amount of people that say Happy Hanukkah, say Happy Kwanzaa, like whatever it is that you do, that's fine. But when we do what we do, that's fine too. You know, like I don't, I'm not really, I don't really have a confrontational spirit. But I also know that truth is truth, and my children, I, the way that I've lived is we seek truth. So when I was asked, you know, well, what do you say to your son about Santa Claus? And it's like, I tell him the truth. We don't celebrate Christmas. Like, mm -hmm. he likes the holiday because people are jolly. He likes the tree. So we get a tree, but we don't decorate it. What we do is we put we put a memento we we do a um, earth honoring ritual versus it being um, a Christmas ritual, but because of the high vibration, he he's really drawn to it. So we've we've acclimated it to at the function of our family, but he understands the 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 significance of the pine tree in every culture, not just in the culture that decided that this is what Christmas is. But ultimately, he also knows that all of these holidays are marketing schemes for these com companies to make extra money because what's a company, th what's a thriving company without a demographic that's willing to pour money into it for useless reasons? Yeah, gotcha. I want to ask Marcus, like, uh, like, did, did you have any issues with your family in terms of, you know, the holidays and not wanting to celebrate? Like, you know, because like I know for me, like uh, and then probably lot, lots of people come into consciousness, you know, different holidays as they become into consciousness may may like they may not want to celebrate them or may cause conflicts with their families. Like did that that was ever an issue with you, Marcus, or um, it was sort of an issue. It wasn't it wasn't an issue like a big confrontation. It was just simply people would say, oh, happy Fourth of July. And. I would ask, like, why are you, um, I would not feel good about, like, saying happy 4th of July back to them because I felt like 4th of July meant something, um, that shouldn't be celebrated or, um. Are, they, are these white people saying happy 4th of July or black people? Uh, white people, black people, family, non-family, and, like, even, um, even with Christmas and stuff like that, I just didn't want to, um, participate, like, I, I would feel co conflicted about wishing family members um happy holidays because I didn't um I wasn't necessarily sure about how they would um ha sorry I'm I'm thinking it through myself right now. It's all it's all good, but what I think you're saying is you you don't you don't really know the foundation of this holiday. Yeah. Right. And so it's important for you to understand things as opposed to just feeling like yeah. you're being led to into something that may not be psycho spiritually healthy for you. Yeah. Right. Let me ask you, Chantel. Was was there was there ever any, any issue with um, perhaps you know your your family and then uh, and how you raised your son or even your family and how you interacted with them growing up in terms of holidays uh, such as Fourth of July, Christmas, et cetera? Well, absolutely. My family is a very patriotic family. Um, my my grandfather spent more than 24, 20 years in the mm. in the navy, um, and. In some respects, I'm I'm patriotic in that sense because of his dedication. However, I express it in a different way. Um, and and for Christmases and Thanksgiving, like I grew up eating the same things my family ate, and it wasn't until I was about seventeen, well, until I 
gave birth to my son at 17 that I really started questioning things because that's when I had independence at that point at the doctor's office. There was like so many different transitions at that point. So at that point, I stopped eating pork. I stopped. I just, you know, and there were things that I did not want to move forward with my child that was forced upon me as a child because I always question things. I don't, you know, my family is very religious and very patriotic. Religiously, I'm like, wait a minute, who's, you know, Christmas, I thought it was about the about worshiping Jesus and his existence. And then why are we so concerned about all of these presents? And why are you mad at this person if they didn't get you a present that cost more? So like I always had these over looming questions that I never got answers to and never could see the answers to or the science behind it because I'm a very scientific, logical person. I analyze things. And so at well, I had my son the top of the year, so I was still 17, but at 18, when Christmas came around, because my birthday's in October, when I was like, okay, I'm not going to do this with him, even though he was a baby, like, I started catching a lot of flack, and once he got a little older, you know, I've been, I've been kicked out of where I was staying with my family because I didn't celebrate Christmas the same way they celebrated. Like they were like, okay, then fine. If you're not gonna do it the way we're doing it, you're gonna need to find somewhere else to what? stay till after the new year. And I literally had to pack myself up from the beginning of December and leave my home and stay with someone else with my baby because I wouldn't do Christmas the way that they wanted me to. Like I've experienced wow. some very very, very, very traumatic um, things just simply because I did not agree with the status quo. Like I was uninvited to Thanksgiving with my family for years because I didn't eat pork and they refused to make any dishes that normally have pork in it that didn't have pork in it and then if I suggested that I would bring my own meal they were just like just just don't come now this is my family these are the people that I come from my first my first like my first line my aunts and uncles not first cousins second cousins nothing like that like my legitimate family so you know I <laughs> <laughs> I've caught the, I've caught the, I, I could honestly say besides being burnt at the stake or shot in the head because I, I've caught a very hefty amount of conflict simply because I just, I either question something or I just decide that that the way that that works doesn't work for me. And until I have more information about why I'm doing that, that way, I'm just going to stay neutral and just observe. So for me, it's been a huge sacrifice, but at the same time with my son now being 21 and being a free thinker and grateful that I raised him the way that I did, I can say that the sacrifice was worth it because we stand in truth and we move in truth. So my son who sees the world in the same fashion that I see the world still has respect for me because I never forced him to do something that he didn't agree on, didn't agree about. And then when he decided he wanted to participate in something because he saw the truth in it for himself, we then have had a more enriched um enriched experience as a family because not only did he come up in a house who respected him as a person he also came up in a house that seek the truth that's gorgeous I, I just want to take the time to commend you for like staying true to yourself during all that adversity and raising a child that uh i'm sure will be a blessing to, to others in the, in the world you know yeah, yeah I mean, and thank you for sharing yeah it's not i mean we 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 and, 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 you know, it's, it's something that, I mean, I don't know, I don't know that I deserve any commitment, but no, you I do. It's, it's difficult. It's, it's difficult. And you do. It comes to a point. It, we just, we just have to be who we are yeah. and we have to be willing to be who we are at all costs. Like they, they don't deal with me because they can't manipulate me. Their love is rooted in manipulation and 
I come, you know, fortunately, I got that vein from my dad's side of the family where they, my mom said that I've spent most of my time around my mom's side of the family and my mom's side of the family, they only manipulate because they've been manipulated and they've allowed themselves to succumb to the manipulation. They make the choice because they could all choose otherwise, but they would just rather be in the comfort zone with the people that they already know instead of standing on their own and being who they are. You know, and as for me, my dad's side of the family is like, whatever way you flip it, this is how you get it. You like it? Okay. You don't? Then leave me alone. And so I'm grateful that I have that vein, you know, but at the same time, it's also been a very isolated walk, but I would rather be alone and isolated and standing in truth than walking along with the herd to imitate the like. Yeah, exactly. 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 I've always been the person that is like, everyone else is like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, but why? Why are we doing it like that? And it's not because I'm I'm not trying to be difficult. I'm not trying to start trouble. I just really want to know, like, I legitimately want to know why. <laughs> you want to know and they don't want to think that's kind of an issue, huh? Yeah, exactly. And so I started questioning myself, like, why am I always around people who just go with the flow? So I just I just started being more mindful about who I and, and frankly, like, I think it was preparing me for the work that I'm doing. Of course, because my family, the people that I look like, the people that I come from, like my tribe has hurt me in so many different ways just simply because I either ask the question why or I won't blindly do something or I just have my own opinion so that by the time I was able to walk out of my home my home's fence and step out into the world I've already seen more than most people can see in a lifetime so no matter what the world throws at me I can stay I can still stand and just keep moving so in a way, I'm fortunate. In a way, I'm fortunate, or I choose to. De I decide that I am fortunate in that way, because in looking at some of the things that a lot of people are experiencing in this world today, like I had it really easy, but at least I know how to keep my head about myself, and I'm not afraid to meet the confrontation that will come when people are ignorant and violent. Because I've had to stand in the face of that and I wasn't shaken. And the reason why that those situations didn't succumb me is because it didn't shake me. Like who, whoever this man or this woman was who was trying to intimidate me with their whatever they were doing had nothing on my grandma. So if I could survive the fire of my grandma, then I'm pretty sure I could handle whatever you about to throw at me. It's cool. We good. I got my son strapped to my back and my sword in my hand. So you can come this way if you want to, but I guarantee you, you're not going to be standing in my way long. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you see, and most of the time they step aside. Because the truth of the matter is, the universal truth is that we all have a right to exist. And we don't have to ask for permission. So all you just really have to do is be like water and move. That's it. Uh, sorry, just, I'm, so, I'm soaking it all up. This is, I'm thinking this yeah, myself. Yeah, that this was is, very chic. Oh, my God. Yeah, I'm just thinking to myself, this is Marcus's first time hearing you. So, uh, you know, I'm like, uh, I'm sure this is like good, good for his soul, too, you know? It's amazing <laughs> for my soul. Thank you. Um, my pleasure. No problem. Just, you know, it just it's just one of those things. Like, we... we we just have so much. We have so much going on. And and like in, in our society right now, everything is, 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 is like they're promoting division. They're promoting anger. They're promoting dissension. They're promoting, they're promoting, they're promoting. And it really takes more energy to be that way than it does to just be. Like if you just let people be, the people who are are like-minded will naturally group together and they will naturally stay to themselves. <laughs> you know, so they could be mad and angry, but they're going to be all the way over there. 
popping off their fireworks for some frivolous reasons that ain't got shit to do with nothing I've ever existed about. Okay. And as a matter of fact, if they shoot them high enough, man, those, that's a pretty cool fucking firework. I'm glad they're doing it over there. Mm, yeah. <laughs> you, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, And then while they're at that, we're busy changing the world. And before you know it, we're going to outnumber them. And then their hearts are going to change anyway because they're weak anyway. And all they're going to do is accommodate. They're either going to accommodate or or morph to the majority or shoot themselves in the head just because they're so hell bent. But that generation, those generations are dying. They're not going to be here. There's this one song by John Meyer, one of my favorites, Waiting on the World to Change. If that isn't one of the most truest songs I've ever heard in my life. And I was so surprised they played it on the radio. (laughs) Waiting on the world to change. You know, and it's like, okay, you know, and basically what he's saying in the song is like, yeah, it's they're full of hate. It's some fucked up shit happening. But they're not going to be around long. And me and my friends, we got plans. We 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 working on stuff over, over here. We ain't sitting idle. But we really just waiting on the world to change. Because time time is the one thing nobody can outrun. Nobody. So I'm not that old. And quite frankly, all my mentors call me a baby. I'm not that old. I'm going to be around for a really long time. So... I know my counterparts are going to be around for a really long time. It ain't going to be like this for long. Why do you think all the earthquakes and stuff are happening? All the earth, the, the, like the earth, the earth is purging herself. Oh yeah, I was, think, I was thinking. I was thinking that. Yeah, I, as soon as I, was, I had a really some really deep meditations the last couple of days, and I, you know, and I and I and I was like, this I mean, some grimy meditations, just like do or die. Like I was like, I was you know having some dark thoughts. Like man, I can't take this world anymore, you know. And then I and then I wake up, and then the next day I I see oh earthquake California. I'm like yes. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I mean, it's, 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 it's bigger than us. Yeah. We, 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 if we, if we stay focused on microscopic things, mm-hmm. we're going to be consumed by it. We're going to be consumed by it. We, and that's why, that's why elevation is a personal journey. And that's why they say everybody, say everybody ain't going to make it. That's why focus is important. That's why meditation is important. That's why separating yourself from the greater whole is important. Because you need to be able to see the difference between what is real and what isn't. And sometimes we can get so heartbroken and so scorned that we stay focused on things that keep us rooted in the lower vibrations. Even though we have high vibe, high frequencies, we can still be rooted in lower vibrations. Well, we're, rooted, end- we're rooted in them part. Partly because of our families too. Well, I'm whatever, whatever, yeah. whatever. It don't I'm not making like, an excuse, like, but I'm just saying. Like, I, I gotta say, for me personally, like, um, I, I've I've realized that no matter no matter how no matter how much you elevate yourself, right? Like, if if you come back to a family that is uh, has a certain negative uh, thought patterns, you're gonna say, you know, you're 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 they're they're gonna they're gonna you know vibrations normalize. You're gonna say so. Unless you feel like unless you feel like transmuting their shit all the time, you're gonna have to move away from them. It's just period, point blank. Like I'm not I'm not sure like when you decided to do that or if you decided to do that at some point in your life, Chantel. But I'm realizing for me, like I I have I have to I have to be in another state for my mother. Like she's she is just too. It's just it's just it's just it's just unhealthy. I feel. But what's, what's I mean, your thoughts on that? And I, and I can and and I can identify because that's been my lesson in the last couple of weeks. Like the main reason why I still talk, the main reason why I still can connected to my mother is because of my children. And in this last week alone while I was away at school and the way that my mother treated my son it has been confirmed my grandfather and it was my children and my grandfather my grandfather is dying I just learned while I was away at school that my grandfather is dying my favorite person in the entire world is dying the only the only real reason why I left myself open for my family to contact me now I really have to like the only person that has ever made me feel like I wasn't a, like that still alive everyone else has passed away but he the only person the only reason like I really had to go in while I was in school like all the way in but I've always known, I've always known 
that I would have to separate myself from them. It has never been a question. I will not get where I'm going interacting with them. But it's not that I can't get where I'm going interacting with them. In order to do so, I will have to be fortified in a way where they don't bother me. They always bother me because all of my trauma, all of my trauma, except for a few instances, all of my significant trauma, my the reason why I have PTSD now is because of my family. So I have to be willing to let them go to heal, to talk to them, to talk to my own mother, to have a conversation. Getting the daily text from my mom every single day triggers something. She triggers me. My mom is my trigger. Like, you see, so I understand what you're saying fully. However, however, that's, that is a choice that we make. We choose to subject ourselves to them, whether we feel obligated or not. If we know that their vibration doesn't serve our greater good, regardless of who they are and what our connection is, if we continue to interact with them, we're consciously making the choice. So at that point, you can no longer fault them for their vibration and how their vibration affects you. You have to take responsibility for yourself. Correct. So for me in that space, it's like, okay, here we go. So the, so, so the, the weaning then begins because it's time to say goodbye because my spiritual pursuit is more important than anything and anyone else. Correct. I don't know where to go from there, man. Marcus, how you feeling? How you feeling over there, man? I'm feeling good. That's it's necessary. Yeah. Mark Marcus is, you know, he's you're, you're 20, right? So yeah, I'm 20. Yeah, I'm, I'm 36, and Chantel I believe is like 38, 39 or so. so 38. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, we're a little, you know, a little older in the game, but I mean, we, you know, we're all we're all in a piece here. Well, well you know, technically Chantel uh, tested as ENFP, but we're all we're all F, you know NFPs here, so. Yeah, you know, she's talking about some introversion with um, you know, separating herself from family. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's like it's it's funny because we all it seems like we all have similar struggles. You know, trying to say, and you know, they're they're gonna manifest in different ways. But uh, I you know, I, I, just meeting Chantel, I'm like, she. It it it, it, it seems it seems like uh, a lot like. Oh, there's there's so there's so many there's so many things that I relate to with her. <laughs> you know what I'm gonna say like it's it's uh it's just it's 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 mind mind boggling and fascinating and and and, it, and it's strange in a strange sense comforting too because you understand you're, you're not alone. You know what I'm trying to say because um that we we live in um we're in this world but we live sometimes in emotional prisons based upon the trauma we've been through. You know what I'm trying to say? Yeah. 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 And not a lot of people understand that because most people don't have value systems. They just um, are going to take the path of least resistance. You know what I'm trying to say? And like, oh, I'd rather have my mother's love. Yeah. You know, so that, that's, my, that's my brother. He's like, oh, you know, but my brother at the same time, you know, my mom treats me like shit and he gets upset. I'm like, you know, I don't even care if my mom treats me like shit because I'm not, I'm not expecting much from her, <laughs> you know? Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah, that's just like that's just like I'm supposed to go to school. I'm supposed to go back to school on the 11th, and it's it's a hefty investment because of some of the things that my mom has done while I was in school. Now I'm I'm jeopardized. I'm in a hole so deep now I may not even make it to school, and I it, this was important to me. You see what I'm saying? Mm. But and in talking to her about it, it's like, well, why did you do that? <laughs> you know, well, why didn't you talk to me before you made that decision, knowing that I would be the one to have to foot that bill? And her science behind it all, and I'm thinking, you knew, see, it, it, see, 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 you can't even be mad at her because you, you know that she's a snake. You knew she, you like, you know she's a snake, so you can't be mad at the snake for slithering. Okay. Okay, here we go. So it's been about, my son's 21 now. It's been about 16 years since she's been able to lure me into this position. So here we go. Now I'm 16 years older. How are we going to handle it this time? You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Now my truth is, listen, 
<laughs> my truth is, listen, you made that decision without my authority, without my, uh, my, without me authorizing it. Now you got to foot that bill. My obligation says, that's your mom, even though she's fucked up and manipulative and da -da 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 -da, you know she knew you didn't have it, and da -da, but that's your mom. So I'm in the middle of this little dance between the way that I was taught to think and the way that I really think, because the way that I really think is just very straightforward. Like, this is what it is. This is how it's going to be. Da. You see what I'm saying? Mm. And so... I am I'm allowing myself to experience my feelings to gain a better understanding of myself. However, I know how I'm feeling and it's coming down to the ninth hour where I have to speak on where I stand. And I know I'm just going to give it, I'm going to speak my truth, but in my heart I feel that tug of the little girl who's been overtly manipulated. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So we that dance, but that dance doesn't ever really stop. However, you can use the wisdom of the experiences that you've had and you can just decide like, okay, listen, this is what we're not going to do. <laughs> you see, like going to school is important to me. Like I've, I'm, I'm li I've literally been homeless literally have been homeless since I started school back in November and just moved into my place on Monday. I graduate. I'm scheduled to graduate on the 22nd of this month after I get there on the 12th. I graduate. All of I, And it was a plan. You know, I'm not looking for sorry. Like my brothers are like, what do you mean you've been homeless all this time? How come you didn't tell me? And it's like, Sometimes like it goes back to that question. What are you willing to sacrifice to get to, to, to manifest your visions? I'm just not one of those people who bullshit. So I saw it, the, the road to where I needed to be was this. I saw that this is the shifting that I needed to do. And I knew how I could gain. I, I knew how I could handle myself in the in-between space. So I did what I had to do. So now that I'm on the verge of manifesting a vision, I've given my mom an inch and she's taken like 800 oh. miles and I have to decide how I'm going to address it. Mm. And so for me, it's like I'm preparing myself to have my last conversation with my biological mother. It doesn't feel good, but it's necessary. Yeah. I mean, I, I can't, uh, I can't necessarily relate. Like uh, at the same time, I can't. I've ha I've had these kind of conversations where I could easily never talk to my mom again, but we end up talking anyway. I think for me personally, like uh, I want to at the end of whatever conversation I have with her that's like that. I feel like I want at the end of it, I want to respect myself. Right. Exactly. Because that's that's at the end of the day, like you know, what what do you really have when everything is stripped from you? you know what I'm trying to say. Exactly. Exactly. And I and, and and quite frankly, I have been on the end of loss way too many times. You see what I'm saying? Like I, I the reason why I could be comfortable being homeless from November till now is because I have been homeless because of her. And it wasn't comfortable <laughs> because of I because I put myself in a position to help her because she said she needed it. And then in turn, it, this, the, I mean, it was a crazy situation. And I ended up homeless with my son. And she didn't give a fuck about it. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So now, I, now I'm at the point, well, yeah, I can be a minimalist. I can live in the woods. I'm good. I don't give a fuck. Well, if, as long as I got a, if I have a hammock and a tree or a pole or something, I don't even need a hammock. Like, I can make do with whatever I have because... I've had nothing before because of my mom. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So I un I understand the lower vibrational thing. However, I've made a lot. I've 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 come a long way. I've done a lot of work, and I've 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 given a lot. I've sacrificed a lot, but I've also gained so much. So I'm not mad about it. You know, it's cool. I just see it as an opportunity to make a decision and to learn more about myself. But I do know where I'm going. She won't be there. So it's up to me to decide how I let that manifest. And at this point, it's like my spiritual pursuits or my mom's feelings. Which one? Yeah. Yeah, it seems your pain got you to a very good place. Yeah. Yeah. 
commitment. It has. It, but I didn't allow, but it, you know, it's like for me in my experience, pain was the common denominator. I knew pain more than I knew love coming from other people. But that also made it so I stayed rooted in my spirit. So I know that for me, I know for me, I give love because love is all that I have. I don't necessarily know. I'm not, I don't necessarily know what it's like to be in a true, like I have, I have people have been ushered into my life. Like I have family, but they're not my blood, you know, and in thinking about it, it breaks my heart. But at the same time, my older son is out in the world and he's rooted in the love that I was able to give him, the love I never knew. You never got, yeah. You were the mother that you wish you had. Yeah. And that's incredible. <laughs> and that is why Lewis was commending you earlier. <laughs> because you deserve it for that. Yeah, you're 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 a, you're a, you're a miracle, Chantel. I don't know about all that. I yeah, just know no, that. no. You have to. You got. You have to. You have to. You have to. You have to take. Sometimes you got. You gotta like. There's not like you've been unappreciated your entire life from from most part from your family, right? Like there's not many people that you need. You need to. You need to understand that. I'm just letting you know. You need to understand that you are a miracle in my eyes, and I'm sure in, in the eyes of this this gentleman here. So you're. You know, you're the shit. You know, I. 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 I uh, I I don't know I I think about you all the time and I I and I think so highly of you. You going to say that like you know I don't know I'm I, I'm an I am uh, just honored just to be in your presence right now. So that's that's how I feel about you. So every every everything like um, I don't know I just like every every everything you say you your words are like um, nutritional. You know what I'm trying yeah. to say? So like your strength, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you're you're just a gorgeous soul. So I don't, you know, whatever. That, they take it, take it, leave it. But that that is the truth. So know that. Yeah, know that. Know that. Yeah, yeah. Know that. And in a in a life where people are not seeing your vision, not seeing your value, and what you what you have come to bring to this world, like we see you. There's just so many people, you know. There's just so many people, and especially kids, you know that it's just amazing how many people are lacking. Mm -hmm. Like our existence is what it is because people are lacking. Mm -hmm. And it's in, and what I really like about, I mean, people think I'm funny. I only said it a few times and I, I, I strategically only said it around the people that I knew would at least be able to kind of ponder it and not like shoot me in the head because I said it, but I was actually, I was actually kind of glad that Trump got presidency. And I was glad that he got presidency because in order for major, in order, in order, in order for there to be major change, humanistically, people have to be, have to feel so threatened. Like it's just a psychological thing. Like unfortunately, most people operate on the vibration where there has to be some significant trauma to, to signal or trigger a significant change. And the things that I saw Trump ushering in within his presidency was going to bring the truth to the forefront. People are acting like all of this stuff is, I mean, it's not brand new and they're not, act, not all of them are acting like it's brand new, but they're shocked or they're upset about it. Well, frankly, this is, this is nothing new. They, people are just having more confidence to say things out loud. But it's what they're talking about behind closed doors, and it's still fueling the same people who are fueling the decision making are still fueling the decision making now. Like it's nobody different. It's the same people. Like come on, guys, what do you what do what do you expect? But in order for us to really start making significant changes on a greater scale, people have to be more willing to see and hear the truth, and the truth is coming out. It's not pretty. But, you know, really, when you really want to think about it universally, we're talking about universal existence overall. And in universal existence, there isn't a good or a bad. There just is. There just is. So your opinion, whether I like it or not, isn't good or bad. It just is. 
So when we're dealing with things from that perspective, it changes the whole context. But in order to have a huge paradigm shift, where people are really will, willing to start embracing themselves as spiritual beings, having a spiritual experience in a physical body, they have to start really accepting who they are and the power that they really are. And most people need to be shown that before they believe that it's happening. And there's a lot more of us who are willing to exercise our divinity by not participating in the things that everybody else is doing. It's like this cylindrical, I don't know if I said it right, but this, you know, this, the spiral that goes up, but it creates a tunnel. It's like the more, the more of us that are willing to just, you know, just not participating is enough. When people who know you, and know that you think differently, when they notice that you're not at the celebration, and they notice that you just, like, you don't even have to say anything. Like, like, like the one thing, the one thing, like, one of the few things that jumped out, there are, there are a few things that jumped out at me at church that made me go, touche, good point, I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna keep that. And one of the things that was said, I was like 10 when I heard it the first time, and they were like, the 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 person on the pulpit was like you know if you 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 don't ha you shouldn't have to walk around stating what you believe in and who you are a lady isn't a lady doesn't have to walk in the room and say i'm a lady treat me like a lady if you're a lady the people around you will know it because of how you carry yourself they will respect you as such so he was talking about Christianity at the time, and he was like, so as a Christian, if you're a believer, then you shouldn't have to walk around toting your belief on your sleeve. People should just know that you are a believer by the way that you carry yourself. And for me, I was just like, hmm, I like that. I like that. So when I'm, when I'm living, like, I don't, I don't, I'm not religious. I don't know. I can't, I can't, I'm just not, but I love. So I can talk to people from all walks of life. Even if I don't know their language, I can still communicate with them because of what's oozing out of my pores. And if they're willing to be the same way or just at least be open, we can actually have a dialogue. I like that. I don't want to be a person that can't communicate with everybody because I, I feel like if I, if I, if I operated like one of my sisters, she has a Nigerian name. And, and, and she, in these last seven months, like she's made me eat. She's made me eat. And I don't even... The way that she cares for me, I've never experienced in my entire life. And so I'm talking to my mom about her. And my mom brings her up later, like Sunday, because I was with my parents. It was Monday, they were here. And she was saying her name incorrectly. And it offended me. And I was like, Ma, that is not her name. Like, you need to, like, that's so, like, it was so disrespectful because she was like, whatever. She said it like five different ways. And it was just like, well, whatever. You know what I mean. And I'm like, this woman has loved me more than you have ever. In, my, in, in, in six months, than you have my entire life. You do not get to say her name incorrectly. But it, I took a breath and I stepped back. I didn't say anything. I just, I said, I did say, you know, that's not how you say her name. That is so disrespectful. Like my son, my younger son, my 10 year old is with me. And my 10 year old, she, you know, this, this woman, my sister, she's nurtured and taking care of my son for me. Like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and so he loves her too. So he heard me say, he heard me, he saw my face, he saw my response, but then he also saw my breath. And he also saw me like put, put the blind, put the, force field up like yeah all right. <laughs> you, you almost had me you almost sucked me in but you're not gonna get me you're not gonna get me this time like we got other things to be focused on and be drawn into low vibrations we got this we she about to leave in 
Two hours and 15 minutes. We good. You see what I'm saying? So it's like yeah. we, we're always going to be... I don't really believe that the universe tests us. I don't believe that. We just have choices to make. And every choice is another pebble in the pond that creates another ripple. And our existence is a manifestation of all those collective pebbles being dropped in the pond. And our vibration is a, is a sum of all the ripples. And I just choose more. I choose more. I choose more. Like I deserve more. I choose more. My grandchildren will not know me like I know my grandmother. My grandchildren will know me like I know my grandfather and my father's mother and my great-great-grandmother and my great-aunt like a pillar of wisdom who always sees me to my core and always speaks love no matter who they come across. We have that choice to make. And when I speak about my children, I'm not just talking about my biological children. I'm talking about all children that I come in contact with. Because sometimes it's the little kid that you smile at at the grocery store that doesn't ever get a smile that you change the context of their life. They're the rest of their life. Mm -hmm. I have had people smile at me in, in, in the most horrific moments where I have just been raped and drugged to church. And, and the people around me act like they didn't even know that it happened. And the person sitting in the pew beside me smiled at me and gave me a peppermint. And it totally changed the whole context of my experience. So it's like in those moments, we have some people will never get an ounce of love except for the flash of a moment that we get to give them. So, yeah, I'm an, I'm an, I test as an extrovert. But it's because I've been made to subdue my introvertism because I've been forced in front of people against my will to do things that I'm capable of doing but I really don't want to do. But I've also been in situations where I've been very withdrawn but simple, small acts of kindness have penetrated my entire existence and helped save my life. So I don't, it's just, that's a lot. It's, I just said a whole no, lot. No, that's good. That's, that's, oh, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. I love it. You made some great points. I was thinking that yesterday, like there's this, there's this little, uh, little kid at the store and uh, he's, I'm going to say he's a little Mexican kid for the context with all this, you know, it's, it's 4th of July and, you know, Trump is, you know, deporting these kids left and right and put them in detention center. So to me, I don't know, I thought, I thought it was relevant just to mention that. Uh, he right. was he was going up to try and grab some chicken nuggets or some of that from the from the shelf, and I see him climbing up and and uh, he grabbed one, and then he was going to grab another, and I'm like, "What do you need, buddy?" And I smile at him, he smiles back. <laughs> just that those those moments, just just to yeah. you know, just to see people as as human in, in a in a in a time where it's like you know, there's a lot of hatred right now towards yeah you know uh, ch children of Mexican descent, I guess you know, especially you know from certain right wing individuals. And, uh, exactly. you know, just, 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 just to see him smile back and the, just like, just like, just brotherly love from, from, from one, from one being to the next, you're trying to say like, yeah. like, it's just, it's a, and, and you know, it's like with children, they're so, they, they, they haven't been so, uh, destroyed from the, the mechanisms of the society yet that they still actually appreciate the, 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 the smile back and the, and the love back and the little things exactly. like, Hey, I, I, I'm tall. I can reach that for you. Here you go, buddy. You know? <laughs> Exactly. You know, because in their minds, that's how they operate. Yeah. You take kids, you take a kid to the playground and don't say nothing to them. They're all best friends in less than 20 seconds. Yeah. Hey, dude, what you doing? Can I play? Da -da 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 -da. That's how they function. Yeah. There's no reason why we shouldn't be functioning the same way. People, we, people lose it because because this, this this whole principle things we've been talking about, or you know, like our our, our value system. People, people, people. A lot of people give that up. I, I think I think personally, I think I think they begin it begins to wane when they you know. When, when do you think it begins to wane for you? I, I think it begins to wane when they have, when they have to become adults. You know, say when they realize you it's know suffering. It's suffering. It's mm -hmm. the suffering that does it to us. I think my personal opinion. We go through these things and we we're disappointed. Or we're taught to, to, we have us, we just, we, we create stories about people 
and we we also create stories through association based on the people that we've been affected by. Yeah. And and we make those stories fact and we live by those stories. And it affects us. Well, in actuality, we're supposed to give people the opportunity to be themselves. But then most people aren't brave enough to be themselves themselves. Yep. So not only are you dealing with stories that you create about other people, now you, we've also created stories about ourselves. Yeah. So it's just one of those things. It's, 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 it's perpetuating cycles and programming that only perpetuate further based on what you choose. Because all of it is a choice. All of it. The stories that I tell myself are choices. My stories have changed. Now I've had to do a lot of work in changing my stories and a lot of dedication, a lot of meditation, a whole lot of yoga. <laughs> but at the same time, the choices that I've made to put certain things in place, I can't even change the new story now if I wanted to because the new story is, my, is the manifestation of my visions. So if, if, if I'd had... If I had this information when I was 19 and I took my first, com my and, 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 and I, I, I put my first, I don't even know, it starts with a C, not a commandment, but covenant, oh, covenant. Com covenant. When I took my first covenant with myself at 19 to love myself for who I really am, I w I w if, I'd have, if I'd have known an ounce then what I know now, if I'd have known that that covenant was going to lead me to where I'm standing right now today, I'd have never let myself get frustrated about a damn thing. Because my lesson in it today is like, it all worked out. Like, <laughs> yo, mm -hmm. like. I'm literally yeah. living my visions. Like, yeah, you can't, you can't, <laughs> you can't take that. Nobody can take that from me. I don't care what you say, what you've ever said, what you thought, what you think you're about to do. The proof is in the pudding. My 21 year old is in a place that most people will never ever be. Like, he is, he, 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 he did not have to experience the things that I had to experience. And he did not have to experience what statistics said we would experience. He might not have a whole bunch of money in his pocket, but he's investing. Because the things that I planned on doing before I had him and never got a chance to do, I still made sure I taught him to do. So he's doing all the, the things that I would have done at the age that he is, but I could not do because I had to focus on feeding him. And I never made him, I never made it a burden. I never made him feel like he was a burden in that way so that he could live unrestrictedly. Because in my opinion, the student should soar like eight times past the teacher. Because if they don't, then that wasn't really a teacher. It was just an energy vampire. Correct. Yeah. So when my cousin's children are calling my son, talking about this and talking about that, and they're like, what you mean you're going to the Air Force? What you mean you're doing this? What you mean you're traveling? What you mean you're doing whatever? And they start talking that crazy talk that my family used to talk to me. And then my my son says, "Hey, mom, I don't think I'm gonna talk to such and such anymore." And I'm like, "If that's if that's what you think is best," he was like, "Well, I don't even know why I started talking to them in the first place, but you know, I love them, but I just can't." And I'm like, "You know, you just got it. It is what it is. You gotta do what's right for you." You got to surround yourself with people that fuel your evolution, that challenge you to be the best version of who you are and f speak life into your life. And if they can't do that, then you'd be stupid not to cut them off. Hmm. All, of, all, all of the Sikhs and all of the gurus from every walk of life had to make choices, had to choose their studies over whatever it was that was happening in their life. And the people that truly love them never gave them any flack for it. Never, ever. There's this one guy I forgot, I freaking forgot. Oh, no, I'm not even gonna be mad because I can't.
don't remember anybody's name. But there's this one guy, and they put him at the they put him as a person that really did a lot of discovery when it comes to um um pregnancy and stuff like that in Europe or whatever. Like it was a doctor, and I watched the documentary on um, how he he made suggestions at the hospital over in Europe you know, hundreds of years ago, or whatever, back when, you know, medicine was becoming, whatever, in functional hospitals were, and the way that they were treating these women was horrific, right? But he started making suggestions, and how the doctor, how his colleagues ostracized him was absolutely, it was, it was textbook, you know, somebody was, claiming it was something different he was introducing different ideals in the system that thought they had it pinned right but he ended up um he ended up getting married and he was always doing his work always doing his work always doing his work always doing his work to where he totally neglected his wife but he was doing the work when they got married not saying he was right for neglecting his wife because i mean you know whatever right but at the same time um she wrote a memoir and it was just really it was just a really long letter so basically and went because she couldn't talk to him she wrote to him and she ended up getting ill because you know they didn't live long in Europe back in the day because they didn't take care of themselves the right way whatever right mm -hmm. so when she passed he found this book of all of the things that she wrote to him and it was talking about how she loved him how she respected his work how she admired him sometimes it was her being like why don't you just give me like i'm like hello am i a per i'm a person i need you like i'm your wife but most of it it was her just honoring him and the work that he's doing and how proud that she was. And it showed dates of when he made like huge accomplishments. And it was in the, in on those dates, she was congratulating him, but she was writing all of the conversations to him that she would have had with him if he took his nose out of his book. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. But she truly loved him. So she respected him and his work. And I'm like, finally, somebody depicting a woman's love. Like, hello, not all women are vixens and not all women. Like, why does it always have to be the woman that's the reason why the guy fails? And how come it has to be the guy that is always doing the major work? Work women do major work too. Like, what's going on? Where's the balance here? But whatever, right? I could go on for days about that. Mm -hmm. But what that showed me is that Yes, I'm super focused. Yes, I'm in I'm doing what I'm doing, but when someone truly loves you for who you are, and it doesn't have to be a romantic interest. When people really care about you, they're going to respect you. They're going to encourage you like, "Yeah, you want to go sit on the side of Mount Sinai for the next year and do what?" meditate i don't even know what meditation is but i heard you say something about it well that, what, do, what do i gotta do to help you get there yeah that that's what that's what we should be focusing on I, i'm the, the conversation about my mom yeah it is what it is she is who she is but i'd rather talk about bahati because bahati is the one who knew when um the vegan fest came up and the 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 and and i helped bring it to fruition and the girl that i was working with was stabbing me in my back and and she did some pretty shisty stuff but i knew i was supposed to be there anyway and when it came time and i wasn't talking much and my heart was broken but i knew i needed to be there because i had drummers there and we were going to do a drum circle and i just had to be there when I when she called me and she asked me if I was okay, I was like, yeah. She was like, so you gonna go down there? And I was like, yeah. She was like, well, okay. Just let me know when you gonna head up there. And I was like, okay, cause she knew if she asked me what time I would be like, I don't know. That it, it was like it was like she paid. She could hear my spirit speaking, and she knew I was moving in my spirit. She, I wasn't moving with my mind. And so I sent her a text and I was like, okay, I'll be there in, in half an hour. And she didn't even ask me where she wanted to meet me. And I pulled up 
I walked over and I just stood in a space that well, not many people could see me. It wasn't on purpose. It was just so I could feel the space of the place because I knew my spirit was supposed to be there. I was doing duty. I realized that it wasn't about me. The part that I was playing in it was spiritual protection because it needed that. And it wasn't about whatever else that was happening. So I just let myself be in that space spiritually and I stood there. And I just let myself be open to the fluctuations of the universe and I just let myself be. And when I opened my eyes, guess who I saw? Bahati. Hmm. Who's that? And she, that is my sister, my my sister, and when I saw her, I wanted to cry, but my spirit wouldn't let me, and I just quietly walked over. She gave me a little hug. She had her drum. She was beautifully dressed, and we walked over to to meet the drummers. And do you know we drummed for hours? And that's all everybody, and at the, when they were doing all the reviews about the vegan fest, you know, all they could talk about was the drumming and how it liberated their spirits. And the girl that was doing the shysty stuff, she came over and she couldn't even get close. She couldn't even bring herself close enough to speak. We made eye contact and I smiled and I put my hand over my heart and I kept drumming. And she walked away, you know, but I did what I was supposed to do. And so this year when they brought the vegan festival back and you could, um, you know, people were like, well, they tried to do this this year, but it just wasn't the same because the things that they tried, the things that I was bringing to the table based in spirit, I wasn't there to bring to the table anymore. Yeah. yeah. But it was, but I know that it wasn't about me. I was just there in that season to help usher something new into the system. It wasn't about me. But because I'm able to stay connected to my spirit, I was able to take myself out of it emotionally. But because of Bahati, because of her presence, because of the way that she loves me, it gave me the space to be that introverted part of myself that I was like, I don't want to talk to anybody. I don't want to explain anything to anybody. The only thing that I want to do is do what my spirit is requiring me. All that politics, all that other stuff, I don't even want to do it. So if somebody was about to approach and she could see that they were going to try to talk to me, she would step from behind her drum and be like, hey, how you doing? What's going on? Oh, we're good. Don't bother her. She's drumming. She deflected. And I could drum even more. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So when people truly love you, you don't got to explain a damn thing because they get it. Now, if you do, I mean, there's an acclimation process, yes. But we have to start be we have to start requiring more about from the people. Like I know that's been a thing for me because I used to take whatever I could get because it was more than what I was getting. You know? Yeah. But at the same time, over the course of time, I had to learn like no. No. It's either going to be what I deserve or it's going to be nothing at all. And if I go 20 years without speaking to a soul then so be it. I'm fine with that because I'm good with me. I'm okay with that. I mean, I got some corny jokes. But I totally know how to laugh at my own stinky corny jokes. Tell me one. I don't even know. <laughs> I'm just <them>. teasing. <laughs> <laughs> like, but you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, we don't. We don't have to. We don't have to sacrifice who we are. Yeah. We don't have to conform. We don't. Well, that's that. That is never a real rule. Like, we don't have to do that shit because we. What? Ha, what? And the reason? And 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 and. We're designed to be the way we are for a reason, for a lot of reasons. It's not even one. It's for a lot of reasons. And the more courage we have to be ourselves, it gives other people permission to be themselves. Like one of somebody I'm really close to, we just we lost contact. We just got in contact again. And, and, and we lost contact because he hurt my feelings. And he knows that he did. And and when I called him out on it, it was a very peaceful ex contra ex um um very peaceful exchange. But I just simply said, "Really?" He was like, "I know. I'm sorry." And I was like, "I gotta go." And and I just and 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 it broke my heart. And so. I was finally able to forgive him because I know that it wasn't intentional. It came out of his pain. But two years later, I was like, okay, so yeah, I'm good now. Like, 
I'm good. And so when we, we had the conversation today, and he just literally said how he felt, and it really just... You know, when people grow, like, people are people. Everybody's going to make mistakes. We're human, right? But it's something to be surrounded by people who own up to their shit and go do the work. Because I'm sorry doesn't mean shit, but changed behavior means everything, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And I was able to tell him, like, yo, I'm not mad at you. I've never been mad at you. I knew it was coming from your pain, and it was unintentional. But it still hurt, and I still had to draw the line and put the boundary up because I deserve more than that. So people who really care, they're going to, when they hurt you, just like if you were to hurt somebody, you would go back and you would fix it. You, you know what I'm saying? Because yeah. you care. It's yeah. the same thing when people truly, well, you don't, you don't, this whole dialogue of this person is like this and then, like, we don't have to let those, we don't have to give those people space. It doesn't matter who they are. It doesn't matter who they are. It doesn't matter who they are. And you don't have to feel guilty about it. Yeah, that's a that's a you know I've uh, I've had so I've had several podcasts on that 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 literally that exact exact topic of just learning how to let people go emotionally so you can find yourself and learn how to like so I feel sometimes people have to become strangers so you can so you can just begin to know them again because you know uh, with a stranger you don't you don't feel any way about them you just you're getting to know them again because you realize that you know you don't really necessarily know that person. And so by them becoming a stranger, it gives you an opportunity to get to know them again, you know, if, if, if yeah. you decide to, you know, so. And it's also like a transformation. So you're changing yourself. So you truly don't know them. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's all relative. Yeah. And each point we get to, we have to reacclimate. And this, that's just like, for instance, would be Bahati and I, like she, she calls me her energy worker. And at one point in time, she was like, I want to do what you're doing. I want to do what you're doing. Teach me what you do. And I was like, Bahati, what I do is spirit driven. You can't do what I do, but you have to do what you do. Let's work on us discovering what it is that you do. And she was making, and she, she, when we first met, she was, when we first, we didn't first meet, but when we first started, like when our journeys were, when we both knew that our journey was at, at least at this juncture was side by side, we're, help, we're here to help each other do something. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So, um, she had this vision to go to Jamaica and to do this healing journey with this herbalist mm -hmm. down there. And she wanted to do that. But then she was like, I'll just be your apprentice. I'm going to pay you to train me. And that's what we'll do. And I was like, and I could, I totally could have used that $3,000. I totally could have used it, right? Mm -hmm. And I was like, nope, I'm not going to let you. you. That's not mm -hmm. what your vision was. Your vision was Jamaica. Mm -hmm. So you keep that and you go to Jamaica. This was a year ago, a year ago, May. And I was like, and she was like, but I don't, and I was like, mama, you want to know what I do? This is what I do. I help you figure out how to bridge your dreams with reality. So I'm going to help you do that. Because that's what I, this is, this is what I do. So let's start manifesting your visions. And so I worked with her in just psychological uh, whatever. Do you know she left for Jamaica two days ago? Today is her birthday. She envisioned being in Jamaica for her birthday. She called me the night before last telling me that she made it and telling me that they took a bath. They have to take baths and waterfalls. And it's just what her dream. She manifested her vision for the first time in her life. And she's 56. It's not about us. When people truly care about you, they lead you back to yourself. When she comes back from Jamaica, she's going to be a different woman. So our conversations, they'd be a little different. And I'm going to have to take it slow because she's not going to be the same woman she was when she left. But it's cool. I'm good with that because she shouldn't be the same woman she was when she left. We shouldn't expect to meet the same person every time we come into in in into into communion with each other. Because we should require each other to be all that we are and to constantly evolve. 
If I'm talking to the same version of you that I talked to last year, I got the problem and I got the choice to make because I don't want to, and I, I can deal with somebody that's stagnant, but do I really want to? If I'm focused on evolution, why am I drawing people that are stagnant? That means I'm not doing something right because the people that are in our environment are simply reflections of ourselves. Oh, that's gorgeous. That's gorgeous. And it's it's just like, wow, it makes you it makes you think like how um how blessed we are to to have, you know, to have the level of conscience that we have at this age, you know. She's 50 some years old and She's 56. Finally she's, letting herself be the version of herself that she wanted to be, you know? Oh, my gosh. She looks up to me, and I'm like, Bahati, <laughs> if you knew how much power that, like, I'm looking at her like, if only you could see what I see. Like, what? Yeah. We're fortunate to be awake so early. We're fortunate. Yeah, I had I had to remind myself that last couple of days because I was really I was really you know going through some like really tough meditations and uh, really just beat myself up about where I'm not at in life. But but I had I had to and this is physical, phys you know, in the physical world, you know. And, but I had to really think about where I am at in life and, and the people that I have touched and 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 the thing and the things at, at my core, my soul level that I that I do know, which is it's like uh, I'm I'm like you know. Uh, 2000 years old you know what I'm going to say in a, in a 30 son year old body so like right. it, nobody there's not many people that are like, going to appreciate that so it's like you got you got you got to learn how to appreciate yourself in a in a world yeah. that doesn't that doesn't value um things that you that you hold dear you know right yeah you do because how can somebody value something they don't understand yeah exactly yeah or they have never heard of yeah. like i mean that's <laughs> Much dating, yeah, right. <laughs> What'd you say? Sorry, you broke. You, yeah, right. you, you broke up there. What'd you say? Say it again. Like people shunning what they don't understand. I was like, that's me and dating. Uh -huh. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. In today's world, nah. A person like me, there's no, there's, there's no like, hey, boo, you cute. Can we go out to eat? Mm -mm. Nope. You could have told me that. I would have said yes. <laughs> Fine, <laughs> but. At the same time, it's like I'm a, I'm I'm an energy worker. Yeah, I'm an energy worker. I absorb everything. I can't afford to be sitting across the table from God knows who, because now I'm feeling everything they've ever experienced. Yep. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? I've no one hundred and ten percent what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> So I can't just do that. Yeah, like it, you know, like I never even tried. I never even bothered trying. I don't. I don't even. I mean, I, 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 I could be wrong, but I think women, fe females, have more pressure to date than men do. It's not like, like, like the mo most men. Like, I remember, I don't have any friends, but if I did have any male friends, it's like male friends don't pressure other male friends to date. I don't know. I don't think that. You, you know, so. Yeah, I mean, but and that's the only reason why I said that, though, just in the context of what we were talking about. Yeah, yeah. In the, just in the essence of just like, there's no way. <laughs> like there's there's no way you know but it's because of what i invest in people it's because of how, how what i invest in myself it's because of what i'm how i'm living like i just don't have the space to just arbitrarily open myself up to anything and anyone in any way and then to have to be obligated to mm, because the kind of people that i roll with like hold on one second sure Okay, but I'm in the middle of something. How you doing, Marcus? You got class coming up here or something? I don't want you know. Yeah, I'm well. Um, I gotta leave around nine though. All right, but cool. Yeah, I'm All right, just, just checking on you. Okay, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna just say this right quick, and then I'm gonna have to say my goodbyes too, because my little guy is starting to get. <laughs> Once he starts interrupting me repeatedly, and I understand, I Chantel. I I'm, gl I'm glad. I, I was, I was like, uh, I, I'm just so glad to hear from you because I was like wondering how how you been since you got you got uh home from school. I was like, I didn't even know. I didn't even know what, you know, like I didn't see anything in your Facebook. I'm like, did she make it a safe? You know, I didn't, I didn't know how you were oh, doing, yeah. but I know you're probably going through a lot with your, your, your mom and things like that. So. Yeah. And then I just, I have to acclimate and have some things I gotta, you know, and that's, and that's the thing. Like I was just called out today. Like one of my friend's mom asked about me and he was just like, you know, she's like a turtle. When when True. she's hurt, she retracts. So I don't know when she's coming back out, but she'll be back out. 
Yeah, but other than that, I just there's just like some things I gotta. I'm working with my son and stuff like that. So I was just it. It was just mainly being away from him, and he just really needed me. So it was just one of those things where. Mm-hmm. But I'm getting a little bit settled, and when I saw that you guys were on, I was just like, okay, I do have some time. I can jump on. Thank so. God! I love hearing from you. You just like you make my day. So that's thank you for for blessing me and blessing this this gentleman here. It was Thank nice to it was nice out. to meet you, Marcus. But I hope to hear more from you instead of like um, taking over the conversation. My bad. <laughs> no, that's no problem. And yeah, sounds good. Hey, right. yeah. So anyway, hold on, before you, before you guys get off, like this retreat, obviously, uh, we're, we're you know this is kind of a conversation to to discuss it and plan it and just kind of feel each other out. Um, September, you know, I and I, I know people's schedules are you know hopefully not conflicting but september the 19th to 22nd so if you guys you know that's a weekend it's yeah it's gonna be it's gonna be through the weekend so it's like uh you know the the the, the 19th is a thursday so if you can't make a thursday it's okay but, but that's got the kind of day people get, get in and be sleepy and tired but you know the the, the it, it ends it ends on a sunday so you should be home for monday you know what i'm trying to say okay. So yeah, it's, 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 it's scheduled that if you need to get to work on Monday, et cetera, you should be good. So it's over, it's over the weekend, it's three days, but the, but the first day is kind of optional. You know what I'm trying to say? Sounds good. Yeah. So, um, 19th through 22nd. Okay. September. Yeah. I mean, uh, this is, this is not like, this is us planning it together. Like, you know what I'm trying to say? Like we, we, we'll get there. We'll get there eventually. We'll, we'll speak every, every, the Friday, the first Friday, every month. But like, this is like Chantel, the way you talked about the drumming and how it kind of happened naturally and things like that and your spirit and everything like that. Like. I, that is what we're trying to create. Like, and it, for it's, us, it's going to be easy because we're all INFPs. We're all on the same page. So I'm trying to create freaking heaven on earth. You know what I'm trying to say? Yeah. So, and it, and that's exactly what it's going to be. And I am extremely strict about vibration. And I, y'all, y'all is hand selected, right? So right. this is this is going to be peace, straight right. peace. So um, I need, yeah. Uh, just keep your calendars open, and we're gonna keep we're gonna keep talking, and we're gonna make this a reality with your help yes absolutely absolutely yeah but but go ahead if you want to but i gotta go guys so have a good night but all right i do 19 19th 22nd i got yes. it all right okay. god bless all right peace later peace all right she's she's something huh amazing yeah <laughs> <laughs> fucking oh, she's oh dude like she's a fucking one of a kind oh my gosh like and this that's just yeah. one that's just one sister like dude there's so there's like so like uh th- i mean yeah she i mean she's near and dear to my heart but there's so many there's so many beautiful sisters that uh and and, br- and, a, br- and a, a brother uh that that uh uh were at least you know intending to make it hopefully they'll make it if not this year then the next year but like um like the type the type the quality of people that that i've been attracting uh you know through this the podcast and the facebook group and um you know doing interviews and things is just fucking these people are just absolutely phenomenal souls an absolute blessing to be in, in their in their presence exactly and like she said it's everything that you attract is a reflection so you're all drawn to you man oh Thank shit you. oh shit <laughs> <laughs> oh that's that that's that's that thank you for that uh that's i have a hard time i have a hard time uh Accepting, but I'm going to accept that. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that. That was yeah, very you're kind. Welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> I'm really happy I was a part of this conversation, even though I didn't talk as much. But yeah, she has so many gems, and I can't wait to take a lot of her um her advice in the meditation and stuff like that. So it's yes. going to be good. Yes, sir. You got to get to class here, yeah? To to yeah. I'm not class, but on um, work. But yeah, I will talk to you later. All right, brother. It's been a pleasure. Yeah, it's been a pleasure. Have a good one. You too. Peace. Peace.